Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu. We're going to emphasize seven key facts that I think every single man needs to understand about women and seven key facts that women as well need to understand about men. Let's begin with women. What do women need to know about understanding men? And inshallah ta'ala the goal of this is that when you understand these seven points it will better your relationship, will help you understand what exactly a man needs, what is he craving for. So, point number one of these seven, perhaps the most important out of all of these seven, what a man really wants from his wife, most of all, is respect. And by respect, I mean that if a man earns the respect of his wife, if he feels that his wife looks up to him, he feels that he is an authority. He feels masculine. He feels as if he is in charge. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has said in the Quran, that men are qawwam over women. Men are the caretakers, the providers of women. And even modern psychologists fully understand this human characteristic. By respecting a man, a woman shows that he is her protector, that he is her guardian, her, her warrior if you like. And therefore, by showing her respect to her husband, she brings out the best in a man. She extracts from him the love, the tenderness, the protection. And what woman wouldn't want her husband to love and protect her? So, the question therefore is, how exactly does a wife show respect to her husband? Obviously, she doesn't come and say, I respect you. That doesn't work that way. Respect is not a, an, it's, it's not a speech. It's not a, a statement. Respect is an attitude. Respect is a mode of life. So I want to give you some examples and some specific details of how respect is shown. Number one, respect his knowledge and judgment. By this, I mean that when he makes a decision, don't second guess. Don't doubt his ability to make that decision. By doubting his ability to make a decision, you belittle him. You make him feel childish, that he's not intelligent, he's not qualified. Don't treat your husband like you would your child. Classic example, if your husband wants to purchase something that you perhaps disagree with, you don't necessarily agree with, let him do it, it's his money. If your husband is driving and he thinks that he needs to take a right turn and you're pretty sure that the house is on the, on the left that you're going to, unless he asks for your, uh, for your advice, just let him do it. By always commenting, by always doubting his decision, you're showing him that you simply don't trust him. Now, obviously I'm not suggesting that all wives become completely and totally submissive, but I'm arguing that the general rule should be that they respect their husband's judgment even if he's wrong, which leads me to my second point. Suppose the wife is with her husband, he's driving, and they're going to their friend's house, and he's going in a certain direction, and she's pretty sure it's in another, another direction. And she wants to comment, you're going wrong, turn left, turn right. So she's becoming now bossy. She's becoming now the one in charge. Well, what if she says, I know he's going in a wrong direction. My second point is, let him learn from his own mistakes and don't become his mother. Suppose that he did make the wrong turn. Well then, guess what? Next time around, he will learn from his mistake and he's not going to make the same mistake. Let me tell you a point of fact as a man. If I make a mistake, I can only be irritated with myself. I can't be irritated with anybody else. But suppose somebody else told me to turn. Suppose the wife told me to turn and she did turn out to be wrong. Well then obviously this will bring about a great source of irritation. So next time he does make a mistake, don't rub it in. Simply understand that a man will make mistakes and he will learn from those mistakes. This is of the ways of showing your respect that you don't double guess his judgment. And therefore, this also leads me to another point. Trust his capability in what he attempts to do. Suppose there's a leaky faucet and your husband jumps at the opportunity to be a man and he brings his wrench from the toolkits, he brings uh, all of the, the tape and all that's needed and he's so excited, he's your knight in shining armor coming to rescue the damsel in distress from the leaky faucet. And instead of welcoming your knight in shining armor, you scorn, you laugh, and you sarcastically say, you, you can't fix a, fe a, a, a leaky faucet. Why are you gonna make things worse? Honey, just call the plumber, please. 
You see what's happened here? Do you see the problem? A man is trying to help out. Your husband is trying to save the day. But his wife presumes that he has no idea how to do the job. This is humiliating. It's painful. It's deflating to his ego. Basically, you're saying that you don't trust your husband to fix a leaky faucet. If you don't trust him to fix a leaky faucet, how can you trust him to be a real protector, a husband, a father to your children? The bottom line, let him try to fix the leaky faucet. Let him make a fool out of himself, in front of himself. Let him learn from his mistakes. And you know what? Most of the time, I'm pretty sure, most of the time, anything your husband attempts to do will actually be successful, much to your surprise. A man loves to take up a challenge. A man loves to break things apart and put it back together. Believe it or not, most men are not idiots. They can try to solve the problems that they're attempting to do. And if a wife insists on demeaning him, on, on disrespecting him, on challenging his knowledge and ability, then basically you are making him out to be a fool, making him out to be an unintelligent person, and so you are hurting his ego. Now again, showing respect here means trusting his knowledge, his judgment, and his abilities. Also, one of the ways of showing respect be respectful in your tone and in your choice of words. One of the main reasons that husbands around the world always complain that their wives are nagging too much. Isn't that common, right? Every culture, every society, the man always says, my wife is just nagging. Well, why is this? That's because a man feels that his wife is disrespecting him. There's a feeling that, that he's not capable, he's not qualified to do what he's doing, that basically you are treating him like a child. You need to understand, my dear sister in Islam, that for a husband, his list of priorities is not the same as yours. A husband, a man, has other deadlines, other responsibilities. Going back to the uh, example of the leaky faucet, suppose your husband has been told once, twice, five times that there is a leaky faucet and he's aware of it. Well, you need to realize that there are other things on his agenda. Perhaps he has a major project at work, which has to pay the rent, which is far more important than the leaky faucet. Perhaps he has to spend an afternoon doing another project that he feels is more important. No doubt, the leaky faucet needs to be solved, but there's a time, a place, and most importantly, a tone of voice and a choice of wording that needs to be displayed when a wife will continue to remind her husband of something that needs to be done. And if your husband states his opinion or suggests a plan of action, don't immediately retort back with a sarcastic comeback. Again, I'm not suggesting that wives be servile and docile and submissive, but I am saying that disagreements and alternative views need to be presented within a framework of respect. Also, if you want to respect your husband, never, ever, in any circumstance, crack a joke about him in public, in front of other people, in front of his family and friends. I don't know how else to put this, I'll be as blunt as possible. Men have fragile egos. Men have extremely fragile egos. Call it male pride, call it manliness, but they do not want their wives disrespecting them, dissing them, putting them down in public. Sisters, let me ask you, would you like it if your husband teased you in public commenting on your appearance or you might have gained a few pounds or something of that nature? Would you think it was funny if he commented on, uh, uh, on the fact that your body is now growing old or something? Would you like that? You are very sensitive of this. Realize your husband is sensitive of other issues. For a man, if his wife does not respect him, who else will? Conversely, if his wife respects him, if his wife looks up to him, then he can challenge the world and he can take on the world. So one of the best ways to show the respect for your husband is to praise your husband in front of family and friends. When your husband whether you do it in front of him or behind his back. So even behind his back, when you're in front of his family, let's say, you say, MashaAllah, you know, uh, Ahmed takes such good care of me and he's this and he's that. It's going to trickle back to him. You know, his brother is going to come back. You know, the mother and father is going to come back. Do you know what that's going to do to a husband when he hears that his wife is praising him? Do you know the love that's going to gush out? Do you know the sympathy that's going to come when he sees that his own wife is, 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 is praising him? Go ahead, inflate his ego. You're going to reap the benefits of that. And praise him to his face as well. Uh, every man loves to hear that, 
I'm so proud of you. You did a wonderful job today. After a presentation, after a leaky faucet, whatever it might be, every man loves to stoke that ego. And if his wife is going to look up to him, then he feels the world is going to look up to him. One final point about respect. If you did do something that you feel, show disrespect. Acknowledge it and say you're sorry. Show your remorse. Show that you want some sympathy. Basically, be a woman and your husband will be a man who loves you back in return. If you look at our tradition, our ahadith text, it is very clear that our re religion demands respect to the husband. And there's a legitimate reason for this. Our Prophet wasallam said, and all of you know this hadith, and it is a lot of time misused and abused, but that doesn't deny the fact that it is a hadith. Our Prophet wasallam said that I do not allow anybody to prostrate to another human being. But if I were to allow any human to prostrate to another, I would have commanded the wife to prostrate to her husband. This is a famous hadith and I want my sisters to understand the basic human psychology behind it. Sisters, if you treat your husbands with respect, your husbands will take care of you, will cherish you, will nourish you, will love you, will comfort you because that is exactly what a loving and a respectful husband does. Conversely, if you treat him with disrespect, then don't be surprised that he will not treat you the way that you think you should be treated. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. We were talking about the points that every single woman needs to know about male psychology, about how and what her husband wants in a relationship. Point number one was respect. Point number two, men inherently, men are created to provide. So it is ingrained in them that they're going to take care of the one whom they love. It is in the fitrah of a man that he wants to protect his wife. Men feel the need to take care of their wives and they feel useful, they feel functional when they do. And this goes back to what Allah says in the Quran that men are qawwam over women. And of the meaning of qawwam is to take care of. And we all know that our sharia obligates upon men to take care of the woman. And this is in complete harmony with the natural instinct that Allah has given us. Therefore, when men do take care of their wives and their families, they feel a sense of pride and accomplishment. Men like to be dependent on. They like to be viewed as providers and supporters. And therefore, working hard for the family is a part of being a man. The irony here is that when a woman complains that her husband is working long hours and therefore is not home to be with her, to complain, to, to pay attention to her, to, to not showing her love, the irony is that from the man's perspective, he's working long hours because he loves his wife, because he wants to provide for his family, because he wants to rise up in his work and get a better and better position. And this goes back to the languages of love. Men show their love by providing the financial support, by providing the, the, the physical needs of the family. Whereas women, by and large, don't view this as being an act of love. And therefore, women need to understand that dedicating long hours to one's work to one's to one's uh, sustenance this is in fact the sign that a man loves his children loves his wife and wants to take care of them another difference between the two is that by nature men think more about the future of finances men think more about what's going to happen if i die what's going to happen to my children what's going to happen in 10 years for college what's going to happen if this and that whereas by and large women think long term relationships women by and large are not that concerned about finances for a man he's worried about making sure that 20 30 years down the line he has enough savings to take care of his wife to pay for his college education kids college education a woman, on the other hand, is more interested in getting her husband's affection and making sure that he's going to love her 10, 15, 20 years down the line. Now, of course, this is not to say that a woman should just let her husband work himself to death and ignore her and not spend any time with her. However, what I'm trying to stress here, a woman must understand the frame of mind of a hard-working husband. She needs to see him for who he is. He's working hard so that he actually does something for her. And 
No doubt in the process he also benefits himself, but there's no denying that if he didn't have a family, if he didn't have children, he wouldn't be working that hard. Therefore, there is a very real danger when a woman continu continues to complain about the work her husband is doing, that this is going to lead to some sense of frustration, eventual anger. Why? Because the husband sees all of this work is done for the wife. Whereas the wife sees all of this work has nothing to do with her. And so there's a huge discord that will take place. The bottom line here, husbands, understand that women have a different perspective on your long hard hours at work. They see it as some type of competition between them and the office place, them and the work schedule. And so you need to understand that while work might indeed be important, family also has a place. Remember what our Prophet ﷺ said, give the rights of every person as they deserve it. Give the rights of your boss and your family and make sure that the two of them find a compatible middle. Don't sacrifice one for the other. And no doubt, there's not going to be a perfect solution. You can't make everybody happy. But do realize that your wife might have a legitimate point that sometimes you do deserve to be home. Sometimes you do need to cut back. Wives, our sisters, you need to understand that your husband's work is not a second wife. It's not a competition. There is no competition. He's working hard for you. He's working hard for your children. He's working hard in order to sustain the relationship because as a man, he's worried about money. And so you need to cut him some slack and realize that that hard work is for you. And each of you needs to realize that that happy middle ground can only be obtained when the both of you communicate your needs and expectations to the other. The third point that I want every single woman to realize. Very simple, very simple point. Sex empowers men. Men feel powerful when they're given sexual attention. It's no secret that men are sexual creatures. Everybody knows that. Even in this course, we've been stressing this point over and over again. The number one complaint that husbands have across the globe is that their wives don't give them enough sex. And this is regardless of religion, race, ethnicity, culture. What women fail to realize most of the time is that sex is not just a biological need. Of course, it is a biological need. Women fail to realize that men's need for sex isn't just like need for food or water or sleep. They don't understand that if a husband doesn't give, uh, get sex, why he gets so cranky? Why, what's the big deal about it? The point is that sex is the key to unlocking a man's emotion. When a man is shown sexual attention, it makes him feel like a man. It makes, him, it, makes, it makes up for any other faults that a woman might have. And when a woman does not give a man sex, every fault of hers, even imaginary faults, will be discovered by the man. Sex makes a man feel loved and allows him to love back in return. If a man is given his sexual needs, the husband feels as if he's ready to take on the world. To be a man means that, means that the masculinity in a husband is manifested within his married life. Let me put this very bluntly. If his wife showers him with sexual attention and gives him great sex, this makes him feel like a full man. He gets an extra powerful energy boost. And with this energy boost, he feels that he can conquer the world. He feels that uh, the, the sense of joy and satisfaction is so powerful that he can sweep away many other worries of life, many other distresses, many other you know, work-related, society-related, and so on. Conversely, if a wife rejects her husband, if a wife does not allow a man to be a man with her, well then how is he going to be a man for the rest of the world? A wife's rejection of her husband is one of the most demoralizing factors that a man can possibly face. And it is for this reason that it is absolutely forbidden in our sharia for a woman to say no to her husband's advances. Saying no is not just a refusal to be a wife, it's a refusal of him to be a man. Saying no is the ultimate height of disrespect, that you're denying him the very essence of his manhood. 
and plenty of men have told me, especially after all of these classes that I've been teaching, that the most painful demoralizing factor in fact some of the men that I have interviewed and spoken to clearly suffer from what we would call depression the single most painful demoralizing factor in a relationship is the wife's continual rejection of her husband women in contrast seem not to realize what a great crisis this causes in their husband's life why because a man by nature bottles up his personal problems and issues. A man by nature doesn't speak about those emotional problems. And therefore, a wife many times is clueless about why their relationship seems to be going down the drain. There was one case that, that uh, I, I was involved with that uh, the husband, the wife was shocked that out of nowhere her husband divorced her. Why? Because, this is exactly the reason that, would ha that happened, because she was reading a, a novel that he didn't like her to read. A, a fiction and a novel. That he saw the book and he says, and he's just one small thing led to another, anger came and the next thing you know, he, she was divorced. And the, uh, the, the couple called me up and the wife was all confused. You know, I don't understand. This came out of the blue. And then when I spoke to the husband privately, the first question, point blank, I asked him, how is your sexual relationship with your wife? And the husband just froze because he was not expecting this question. The husband just froze, began to fluster. And then he almost broke down in tears and he confided with me that it was the source of the greatest tension, that it was because of that sexual frustration and tension that he was finding things to, 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 to get irritated about. You know, 90% of the time, when the husband is constantly picking on the wife, it's because of a sexual frustration. And I have been told by dozens of husbands that if there is a good connection in sex, every other fault of the wife is ignored. Bad food, late laundry, dirty house, everything is ignored. Conversely, if the sex is not good, then every fault of the wife becomes 10 or 100 times bigger than it actually is. In fact, faults will be invented when they don't actually exist. Therefore, sisters realize that Men's need for sex isn't just a biological need, it's a psychological need. And never in any circumstance, and this we believe as Muslims, but wallahi, even if you're not a Muslim, this is what modern psychologists are saying, that women should never refuse the advances of their husband because saying no to your husband is to tell him point blank, you're not a man for me. You're not worthy of being a man for me. And if he can't be a man for you, how can he be a man for the rest of the world? We'll take our next break here and then come back and finish up what are the main points that a woman needs to know about a man. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. Welcome back. We we're talking about the main points that every single woman needs to realize about men. The next point is very awkward. It's very embarrassing. Frankly, it's very demoralizing for many sisters. But it needs to be said as bluntly as possible. Throughout this course, I've been very frank with you. And the reason for this is that I firmly believe that knowledge empowers, that knowing the other gender, understanding basic male and female psychology will make a marriage situation better. The fourth point that every single Muslimah needs to realize is that women are the single greatest source of fitna and attraction for men. Men are naturally attra attracted to women, not just a woman, women in the plural. And even pious Muslim men, even happily married husbands, even people who love and adore their wives to death will find hundreds and millions and billions of women attractive. And that is because it is ingrained in the nature of men. No matter how beautiful their wife is, no matter how gorgeous, and no matter how much they love her. Sisters, please understand this point. Your husband can love you with his whole body and soul. But visually, one part of his brain, not his heart, one part of his brain will find millions and billions of women attractive. Women just don't understand how visual men are and how that affects their sense of appreciation. If a woman walks into a room, she might notice how expensive uh, a, another lady's purse is or how beautiful a lady's dress is but she will hardly notice how tight that dress is on her body or how that dress accentuates her curves or how much skin is being flashed. However, 
when a man walks into any room, I can assure you that the first thing that he notices are all of these points, how tight the dress is, the shapes of her limbs, how much skin is, uh, is being shown. And as long as he is in that room, even if he's the most righteous Muslim on earth, he will be battling the urge to stare. It's ingrained in every single person. In fact, it doesn't matter if the man is married or single, it doesn't matter if he's young or old, all men get a sense of thrill and a sense of happiness looking at a beautiful woman's body and that is why our sharia commands us to lower our gaze. Now, what this translates into is that a man automatically, inherently detects the presence of beautiful women. He's subconsciously aware of their presence even if he doesn't show it. If they go into a restaurant, if they uh, walk in the, the lobby of a hotel, wherever they are, if somebody's dressed inappropriately, his head automatically, his eyes, no matter where they are, automatically will register that. Even if he's holding on to his wife's hand, one side of his brain is instantly registering all of these visuals that were coming in. As if that weren't bad enough for every man, these images are constantly popping into his head throughout the day, throughout the night, and yes, even nights, men dream about uh, women. Typically, a young teenager finds his mind is inevitably wandering over to the topic of women every second, third minute. Every single young man finds it difficult to concentrate for any period of time without thinking of women. Now, why am I telling all of this? And I, I can assure you, sisters, I know your first reaction. I've taught this class too many times. You will say, I don't believe you, Sheikh. I just don't believe you. Whereas every single brother will be like, well, isn't that obvious? Didn't you know that? And I understand, sisters, it's very awkward for you to hear this type of information. Now, the first reaction of sisters is, if it's so bad, why don't you lower your, great, your gaze? Well, frankly, these days, even if you lower the gaze in the Western world, you'll see stuff you shouldn't see. But that's besides the point. What I'm stressing here is that even if a good Muslim man lowers his gaze subconsciously, they are acutely aware of the presence of such women and they're battling temptations to look at them. And it is true to state that it's impossible even for the most righteous man to guard his gaze 100% of the time. I am uh, reminded of prophetic hadith and a statement of Ibn Abbas. In a prophetic hadith narrated by uh, Sunan Abu Dawood, our Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, it is said that he was sitting outside and a lady passed by in the distance. And uh, he felt an urge and he went to his wife and he satisfied that urge and then he came out and he said, Verily, when a woman walks outside, shaitan makes her look more beautiful than she is. Shaitan beautifies her up. So when one of you sees something that agitates him or basically you know, increases the desire, let him satisfy that desire with his wife. For indeed, his wife has what the other woman has, meaning his wife is a woman and the other lady was a woman as well. This is our Prophet Muhammad I want you to think about that. Even he was a man. Ibn Abbas, the famous cousin of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he commented on a verse that Allah says in the Quran that uh, Allah shall forgive all of the, uh, uh, that excuse me, that Allah will punish all of the major sins, but as for the lamam, they are overlooked. What is the lamam? Means the minor sins. As for the lamam, as long as you're righteous, they will be uh, forgiven through the other good deeds. Ibn Abbas said, I know of no better illustration of what is a minor sin than the gaze of a man towards a woman. Now this is an, like an inevitable minor sin. Ibn Abbas is saying, I know of no better illustration when Allah says he shall punish the major sins and as for the minor sins, they will be forgiven if you're righteous. And this is what the hadith tell us. If you're praying, if you're, uh, and, uh, by the way, this isn't an open license to go stare, obviously. The point being though, nobody can win the battle 100%. Nobody can, and I can assure you sisters, no man living in the Western world, dare I say even the Eastern world, can a day go by except that one or two images or something of this nature goes into his gaze. So why am I saying all of this? It's very depressing for women to hear, isn't it? And frankly, I know for a fact because of the comments that I've gotten back that this knowledge depresses sisters. It makes them feel cheap. It gives them a sense of hopelessness. Sisters. I'm not teaching this to you to depress you. 
I'm teaching this to you to empower you for a better marriage. Primarily for two reasons. Firstly, when you do catch your husband's eyes straying, of course, be irritated with him, show your pain and frustration, and also be a good Muslim wife to him, and uh, later on ask him what you can do to help him. But don't ever interpret your husband's gazing as implying that he doesn't love you or he loves you any less. That's the main point here. This attraction that a man has for another woman literally is at a surface level. There's no heart attraction. The love is going to be for his wife, but it is a different part of the brain. It has nothing to do with the wife being unattractive, with the wife being any less beautiful. In fact, it's not even fully sexual. And by that, I mean, it's not the case that every beautiful woman he sees, he actually wants to take her to a hotel or motel and, and do it with her. No, it's just that it's a man's nature to admire the outer beauty of a woman. And I'm reminded of a very famous scenario, I'm not going to mention the names in this class, but a case went to court, it was in the national media and whatnot, that there was a really famous world uh, model. She is known across the world, and every one of you probably knows of her name. She's one of the top five models in the world. That's how beautiful she is, right? And she has posed uh, naked and with clothes on. She is drop-dead gorgeous. And her husband was caught looking at pornography in their own house. And so she ended up divorcing him. Now, what's the moral of the story here? This man was married to one of the most drop-dead gorgeous models on the face of this earth. But he wasn't satisfied with her. He wanted more. And the irony is, excuse me for being so blunt here, while this man is looking at these dirty images, there must have been millions of men around the world looking at dirty images of his own wife. Because she's one of the top models in the world. And his own wife is in the next bedroom. That was the whole point is that, you know, the wife is at home, you know, she's there and he's not satisfied. He wants something else. Now, again, astaghfirullah, I'm not excusing what the guy's done. I'm not saying that this is right. What I'm saying though is that sisters, don't diminish your own ego, your own sense of honor and respect if you do find your husband looking at another woman. Of course, reprimand him. Of course, rebuke him. But it's got nothing to do with you and it's got nothing to do with his love for you. Secondly, when you realize that men have this huge um, problem looking at women and they have all of these images circulating of women uh, in their minds and, 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 and popping up everywhere you know, around them, try to understand just for a while the frustration that he feels, the sexual frustration. And imagine that if he couldn't get that sexual frustration satisfied with his wife, where will it lead him? Sisters, no man in, a, in any Western country can even cross the street or turn on the television or open up a magazine or log onto an internet site except that there are dozens or hundreds of images smacking him across the face. My point to you is have some sympathy, have some mercy, have some love and give him that sexual attention that he deserves as your husband. Sisters, let me be blunt here. If you're not going to flaunt your body in front of your husband, if you're not going to be confident by showing your body and your nakedness in front of your husband, if you're not going to show him what is halal for him to see, well then what do you expect him to do? Let him appreciate your beauty, let him appreciate what Allah has blessed you with, and inshallah ta'ala that will help him minimize some of the problems that he faces. Inshallah we'll take another break here and come back and finish up what women need to know about men. The fifth fact, the fifth fact, for a man, romance is all about sex. That's just the fact of the matter. Men will do romance and the only reason they will do it is because they want it to lead to sex. For them, romance and sex go hand in hand. They just don't get the importance of just giving gifts giving chocolates, giving flowers, unless it's going to be linked to the sexual reward after that. And therefore, there is, there is a perception, and it's relatively true, that uh, men are a little bit unromantic. They're inherently unromantic. They're awkward about uh, romance. However, when men are surveyed about romance, an extremely large percentage of them respond that they would like to be romantic. Well then, if they want to be romantic, why are they so clueless about how to be romantic? 
Well, as a man, let me tell you honestly how we feel. And of course, what I'm about to tell you is found in many simple self-help books and, and, and psychological uh, uh, guides, so it's not just coming from me. The number one reason men will not be romantic is because they fear that their efforts will be rejected, mocked, ridiculed, or discarded. In other words, men feel insecure about how successful their romantic attempts are going to be. So, for example, and so therefore, women need to be extra sensitive about how they interpret and how they receive his romance. For example, suppose a husband tries to plan a romantic evening and he uh, goes to a restaurant or he does this or he does that. A wife needs to realize if she criticizes the food at the restaurant, the man will interpret this as he hasn't done his job. Now, even though for the woman's perspective, she might have had the best time in the world. She might have enjoyed the fact that he took her out. She's happy her husband spent time. But when she found a flaw with his plan, which was this restaurant, or suppose they went out to a movie, and she goes, ah, what a boring movie. So then what you're basically implying, even though you don't imply this, but the husband interprets it, that you made the wrong choice in choosing this movie. Uh, suppose he gives her a gift that she doesn't really need, or she doesn't like, or she's flustered and embarrassed by. And so she says, oh, why did you give me this? You shouldn't have. I mean, why'd you spend so much money in this and that? Now, she might be flustered. She might be awkward or embarrassed, or maybe genuinely she would have liked another gift. But the point is the man will interpret as if he failed. And therefore, even if something goes wrong outside of his control, he will feel he was the one who let him down. Now, the point here is that a woman needs to realize that when a man shows her some romance, the, the intention, the, the goal behind it is so that she literally melts in his arms. She, she thanks him, she kisses him, and eventually, yes, it is linked to sex at night. That's exactly why a man would want to do that. Now, another reason why romance is awkward is that the definitions of romance might be different for men and women. For many women, snuggling up on the sofa in front of the TV after a candlelight dinner is the main definition of romance. For a man, it might be taking his wife out on a drive or uh, doing something that you know he likes to do. It's a very different understanding of what romance is. Now, this problem is a little bit easier to solve, and that is that each couple needs to communicate what exactly they'd like to do together. Now, another problem is that if romance does not lead to sex, once again, the man feels a little bit let down. Well, frankly, he feels very let down. And again, I'm just being blunt here so that our sisters understand. By now, after all of these hours of lectures, surely we understand that men are sexual creatures. And romance is supposed to be rewarded with intimacy. And all you need to do is look at Western culture. Why do men wine and dine a girl? Well, because they want to sleep with her. Why do men go out on dates and spend money? Well, because they want to basically get her to their apartment. This is the reality of Western culture. And therefore, and that is in the fitrah. And therefore, when a husband does something for his wife, it is the biggest mistake for the wife to criticize that as somehow being inadequate. Sisters realize, as I said before, men have fragile egos, very fragile. So when he brings you a gift, jump for joy, kiss him, hug him, reward him at night. Even if you didn't particularly like that gift, the fact is, by you saying no, or by you criticizing, you have effectively killed romance, and any other attempts are going to be uh, stopped by him. Realize that one negative comment might mean the absence of two or three years of romance. So that's the fifth point. The sixth point that I want to make, the sixth point is, Beauty is the attempt to be beautiful. What do I mean by this? Women, I'm going to be very frank here again. Husbands really don't care if their wives' behinds are a little bit bigger than when they got married. But they do care that the wife is attempting to look good. She's wearing perfume. She's wearing makeup. She's looking good. Husbands don't compare their wives to supermodels. They really don't. 
husbands are happy with their wives, but they are very irritated and hurt if their wives don't care about their own looks. Sisters, let me tell you, frankly, one of the biggest complaints that I hear from husbands, and one that I also recognize, is that wives seem to spend hours getting ready for a sister's event, for their friends, for going out to a party, for going out to a, a, a wedding invitation but they can't even spend five minutes of the day before their husbands come home to make themselves look better. And this is one of the biggest complaints that husbands have, that they don't make the extra effort to want to look beautiful in front of their husbands. And my dear sisters in Islam, the one person in the world who deserves your beauty, who's really supposed to see you completely decked out, is not your girlfriends, it's not the friends at the wedding party, it's, a, it's your husband. And if you're not going to get ready for him, well then why are you spending time to get ready for anybody else? Women by and large don't understand the significance of looking good in front of their husbands. And they actually believe that they have to compete with the images of supermodels. Now it is true, I mentioned in a previous point, that the husbands are bombarded with these images. But let me tell you as a man, a husband can decompartmentalize. He knows that these images are fake or he knows that these are of supermodels. He's not comparing his wife's body to that of all of these supermodels. What he wants is his wife to attempt to look good, to put on some makeup, to dress nicely, to comb her hair, to be perfumed. And one of the biggest problems comes that a woman is very insecure about how she looks. And here is where uh, the good news comes, that when a woman attempts to look good, when a woman takes time out, even if it's five minutes uh, of her day to comb her hair, to dress up, to put on some perfume, the husband sees that she cares about her appearance, that she's wanting to look beautiful. In one survey that I read, almost 85% of husbands surveyed said that what mattered was not that their wives looked 10 or 20 years younger, but that they showed they cared enough about their husband's feelings that they attempted to look good. Sisters, frankly, you are overly sensitive about how you look. You're overly critical. Your husband is nowhere near as critical of you as you are. Now, to an extent, it's a little bit healthy to be critical of your own looks, but it is true to say that for most men, for most men, what they want to see is their wives attempting to look beautiful, is their wives dressing up. The fact that they attempted to dress up makes them dressed up. The fact that they attempted to be beautiful makes them beautiful. And this is one of the most important and simple points that every single woman needs to realize. This leads us to the seventh and final point. I call it cave time. What do I mean by this? Sisters, wives, realize it is in the nature of men that they need some alone time. They need to be cut off from everything. They need to, whether it's reading the, the newspaper or, 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 or browsing online or reading the news or listening, they need some alone time. It is in the nature of men that when they have a big problem, they don't tell other people, they sit down and they think about it. Or they'll think of other problems and let that work in the back of their mind. So for example, it's very common, men have a big problem, they're going to come home and listen to the world news. It's very depressing, a lot of things happening. You're looking at far bigger problems and listening to these bigger problems actually helps a man cope with his own problems. Sisters realize every single husband needs some alone time. It's called, called cave time. He wants to go into his cave, cut off from everything else around him. So when your husband wants that alone time, wants that cave time, let him go into that cave, but have some time. He needs to realize, of course, he needs to come out as well. Of course, one of the problems is that husbands, when they come out of the cave time, they just want to go to sleep and don't want to spend any family time. Definitely, that's the other extreme. But do realize, men, are not as social as women. Men are not as open about their feelings as women. It is a part of being a man 
to go brood, to go contemplate, to go sit in a quiet corner, and that quiet corner could be in front of the television, it could be in front of the computer, it could be in front of a magazine or book. And therefore, if you have something really important to talk about, and you find your husband in his cave, well then, tell him, uh, honey, when are you going to be finished so that we can talk? Now, of course, I mentioned before, husbands need to be fair as well, that if they say 7.30 or 9 o'clock, they better live up to their adjustments and their promises as well. But wives realize that husbands, every man needs some time alone. When a man walks away from an argument, when a man goes into his room and the wife is having an argument with him, let's say, that doesn't mean he doesn't care. That's his cave time. You need to understand for a man, a big problem is solved by quiet space, by thinking it through. This is the way he does it. Whereas for a woman, a big problem is solved by talking about it, by talking with her friends, by repeating the same thing over and over again. And a man doesn't solve things this way. Simply understanding this basic fact of male psychology will help a, going a long way in giving him some free space and allowing him to be who he is. And of course, no doubt, when we talk about the men will say, men as well need to understand that this cave time cannot eat up their family time. There's a time for this and a time for that. These are the seven primary points that I want every single Muslimah to know about men so that inshallah ta'ala it will help them in their relationships. Jazakumullahu khairan. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.